Uranium is the heart of every nuclear reactor and the main part of the world's deadliest weapons. Enriched uranium, a silvery metal with the power to light up entire cities or destroy them in an instant. Despite its massive influence on modern history, very few people actually understand what enriched uranium is or how it's made. From the deserts of Kazakhstan to top-secret enrichment plants in the US, Russia, and Iran, enriched uranium is one of the most closely monitored and technically advanced materials on Earth. It powers more than 400 nuclear reactors worldwide and forms the critical ingredient in everything from nuclear submarines to atomic bombs. So how is it made? What transforms a rock dug out of the ground into one of the most powerful materials in the world? Today, we're pulling back the curtain and taking you inside one of the most secure industries on the planet to see how uranium goes from raw ore to reactor-ready fuel, step by step. The Origins The journey of converting uranium to enriched uranium doesn't begin in a science lab or a power plant. It actually starts deep underground. Uranium is a metal found in certain types of rocks, like sedimentary rocks, but mainly found in sandstone, and it's mined from ore deposits all over the world. Some of the biggest producers of uranium are countries like Canada, Kazakhstan, Australia, and Namibia. But here's the thing. Uranium ore doesn't contain much uranium at all. In fact, most rocks have less than 1% usable uranium in them. That means companies have to dig up a lot of rock, crush it, and process it just to get a small amount of uranium that can be used. However, uranium was first discovered way back in 1789, but people didn't understand how powerful it could be until the 1900s. That's when scientists figured out it could be used to make nuclear bombs and also to create clean energy for electricity in nuclear power plants. Now, natural uranium is mostly made of two types, or isotopes, U238, which makes up about 99.3%, and U235, only 0.7%. The problem is, only U-235 is useful for making energy or bombs because it can easily split and start a chain reaction. But 0.7% U-235 isn't enough to be useful on its own. To use uranium as fuel in a nuclear power plant, the amount of U-235 has to be increased from 0.7% up to about 3 to 5%. And for a nuclear weapon, it needs to be over 90%. The process of increasing the amount of U-235 is called enrichment. It's a very high-tech and tightly controlled process because enriched uranium can be used to make both energy and weapons. That's why uranium enrichment is one of the most closely watched and sensitive technologies in the world. Mining and Milling When it comes to uranium enrichment, the first big step is mining that is getting the uranium out of the ground. There are a few ways this is done. In some places, workers dig open pit mines, which are huge holes in the ground. In others, they go deep underground through shafts and tunnels to reach the uranium. The third method of doing this is called in situ leaching and is more modern. It works by pumping special chemicals into the ground to dissolve the uranium right in the rock. Then, the liquid containing uranium is pumped back up to the surface. Once the uranium ore is brought out, it needs to be cleaned up and concentrated. This happens at a place called a mill. There, the ore is crushed into smaller pieces and mixed with chemicals that help separate the uranium from the rest of the rock. After this chemical process, what's left is a fine yellow powder called yellow cake. Its scientific name is U-308. Yellow cake might look like something soft or harmless, but it's actually radioactive. You can't use it in a nuclear power plant or bomb just yet, but it's the starting material for everything that comes next, including enrichment. So from deep underground to a powdery yellow substance, this is how uranium begins its transformation. The next step is to turn yellow cake into gas, 
so it can be enriched. And that's where things really start to get high-tech. Conversion, solid to gas. Before uranium can be enriched, the yellow cake powder has to be turned into a gas. This step takes place at a special site called a conversion facility. Here, scientists use a series of chemical reactions to change the yellow cake, U308, into a gas called uranium hexafluoride, or UF6 for short. UF6 is a very unusual material. At room temperature, it's solid, kind of like salt or sugar. But if you heat it just a little, to around 56 degrees Celsius, or 133 degrees Fahrenheit, it turns into a gas. This is important because the enrichment process of uranium only works on gas, not solid or liquid. Once the yellow cake has been turned into UF6 gas, it's stored in large, sealed metal cylinders. These cylinders are built to be extremely strong because UF6 is not only radioactive, it's also chemically reactive, meaning it can be dangerous if not handled carefully. The cylinders are then shipped to enrichment plants, which are highly secure facilities. Because uranium enrichment can be used to make either nuclear fuel or nuclear weapons, these shipments are watched closely. In fact, international agencies like the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, keep track of every cylinder to make sure no uranium is secretly turned into bomb material. So by the end of this step, the uranium is no longer a yellow powder. It's now a gas, packed up and ready to enter one of the most advanced and sensitive parts of the process, enrichment. Enrichment. Now enrichment brings real science to the process. The main goal of enrichment is to increase the amount of U-235 in the uranium. Remember, natural uranium only has 0.7%, U-235, and we need to raise that to 3-5% to for power plants, or even higher for weapons. The most common way to do this today is called the gas centrifuge process. It might sound complicated, but here's the basic idea. The uranium hexafluoride gas, UF6, which we made earlier, is sent into tall, fast-spinning machines called centrifuges. These machines spin the gas at incredibly high speeds because U-235 atoms are slightly lighter than U-238 atoms. They naturally start to separate. The lighter U-235 slowly moves toward the center, while the heavier U-238 moves outward. Each centrifuge only makes a tiny improvement in how much U-235 is in the gas. So, to get the level we need, hundreds or even thousands of centrifuges are connected in a long chain called a cascade. Bit by bit, the uranium becomes more enriched. When the process is done, the enriched uranium gas is collected for use. The leftover gas, called depleted uranium, which is mostly U-238, is either stored safely or used for other industrial purposes. An older method, called gaseous diffusion, used to be common, but it required more energy and wasn't as efficient. Today, centrifuges are the preferred method all over the world. Fabrication After uranium has been enriched, the UF6 gas needs to be turned back into a solid so it can be used. For nuclear power plants, the gas is usually cooled and converted into a black powder called uranium dioxide, or UO2. This powder is then pressed into small, round pellets, about the size of a fingertip. These pellets are placed in a very hot oven. A process called sintering is applied. Sintering makes them hard and smooth, like tiny ceramic cylinders. Once they're ready, the pellets are stacked into long metal tubes, called fuel rods. A bunch of these rods are put together into a group called a fuel assembly. These fuel assemblies are then sent to nuclear power plants, where they're used in reactors to create electricity. In military programs, the process is a bit different. When the uranium is enriched to a very high level, usually over 90%, U-235, it becomes weapons grade. Instead of making pellets, the uranium is kept in metal form and carefully shaped into the core of a nuclear bomb. 
Because of how dangerous and powerful this material is, its production and use are strictly controlled by international laws and agreements. Quality Control and Safeguards Enriching uranium isn't just about science, it's also about safety and trust. Because enriched uranium can be used in both power plants and nuclear weapons, the whole process is watched very closely by international organizations. The main group in charge is the IAEA, International Atomic Energy Agency. They use remote cameras, do on-site inspections, and place seals on equipment to make sure nothing is tampered with. Their job is to make sure countries aren't secretly trying to make nuclear bombs. At each step of the process, the uranium is carefully tested. Scientists check how pure it is, how much U-235 it contains, and how radioactive it is. Even small mistakes, like a leak, contamination, or too much enrichment, can be dangerous and cause international tension. Once the uranium is ready and made into fuel, it's packed into shielded containers for safety. These containers are then transported to power plants. The entire trip is tracked in real time and follows strict safety rules to prevent accidents or theft. Any enriched uranium that is not used right away can be stored for decades in secure places or reprocessed into other nuclear materials like plutonium, which can be used in advanced reactors or weapons. The leftover part, called depleted uranium, is also stored. Sometimes it's used in military armor or as radiation shielding in medical or industrial settings. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the world of enriched uranium, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Let us know in the comments what tech topic you want us to uncover next, and we'll see you in the next video.